Pierce Morgan made quite a name for himself with international audiences, working as, I guess you call it an anchor person, a morning personality, whatever it was, he was on Good Morning Britain. And while he was there, he drove the ratings up by giving a certain sector of society exactly what they were calling for, hate. Hate, hate, hate. Hate for the outsider, hate for an American, hate for the woman of color. And a lot of it really seemed to hinge on this very, very subtle, very, very subtle racism. Where these comparisons were made targeting this woman for a lot of reasons. And her race seemed to be part of it. But not just him. It was a whole infrastructure of people. And of course that person, Pierce Morgan. The most athletic thing that I've ever seen in my life. Pierce Morgan. He, um, he kind of hid his talent from everyone. He was quite athletic and we didn't know it. Of course, his usual workout was taunting people saying the shadiest things that he could think of to get some kind of reaction, if not from the subject of his scorn, but perhaps from the viewers, the listeners, anyone who he thought could help to bolster his image. And the way he built himself up was by tearing other people down. And he did quite a good job of it, I must admit. Um, he had the efficiency of a great white shark. Well, this went on for quite some time until he encountered his biggest fear. And that big fear? A strong black woman. <laughs> That's what took him down. That is what took him down. You see, after the Oprah Winfrey interview, you probably already know this, but let's uh, go there anyway. After the Oprah Winfrey interview with the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, he became unhinged. He was frothing at the mouth. He was literally shaking. You might even say he was incandescent with rage. <laughs> he was incandescent with rage. I mean, he just... Oh, the, the blood vessels on his neck was sticking out. He doesn't really have much of a neck. But for what he has, I'm sure underneath all of that flubber there was blood vessels pulsating with the with the blood of the empire out to take down the person of color the woman that proved to be the worthy adversary was dr shola dr shola was equally irate and agitated that particular morning because like all of the rest of us here in you know, the Sussex squad, we watched that interview. Now, I myself, I watched it with tears in my eyes because I could feel the pain that the Sussexes encountered before they left that um, imperious family behind. So, Dr. Shola was having none of it. And she dressed him down in a way that was even shocking for him. In spite of all of the bluster that he put on bear, that show of force that he used, he couldn't handle her. She literally took control of his show and he didn't know what to do because this is something he had rarely experienced, if ever, in life. So Pig Morgan, I'm sorry, Pierce Morgan found himself unable to cope or comprehend. But it wasn't over yet. Dr. Shola pretty much dictated the terms of their conversation. And once she was done, she told him, you may speak. Now you may speak. <laughs> if you haven't seen Dr. Shola's epic takedown of Piers Morgan, um, you just haven't lived. She was magnificent. I mean, just, she, she, she wore him out. It was just no way that he could cope or comprehend with what was going on. But he asked for it himself. You see, Pierce Morgan, by this point, 
he was trying to make this case against the Duchess of Sussex because he realized, like so many other people in his position, that life is just not going to be the same. But I had no idea. I had no idea that what happened next was coming. And we all know what happened next. This very sedentary creature of bluster and blubber. <laughs> Bluster and blubber. <laughs> that sounds like a, a couple of guys that met at a Weight Watchers meeting or some kind of like Overeaters Anonymous, Anonymous uh, support group and they just got kind of mad at the system. <laughs> And they formed a rock band so that they could, you know, I guess, um, rebel against the world. And they named the band Bluster and Blubber. Um, <laughs> or they could just name the band Pierce Morgan, Bluster and Blubber. Anyway, Bluster and Blubber, Pierce Morgan. <laughs> he... He was, um, he was dragged pretty bad by Dr. Shola because we all watched the interview, but Pierce Morgan, rather than stepping away with any type of sympathy or understanding, or, um, but I have to say, there was that very shallow moment that very, it wasn't a, a really deep plunge into the pool of reason, but it was this very shallow moment where he almost seemed to want to pull back some of his past indiscretions during the whole protest over George Floyd. But then Pierce Morgan took a good look at his face and his chins and his face and, and the rest of those jowls in the mirror. And then, of course, he went and got another mirror because that big fat head wouldn't fit in one mirror. And then he took, it, took measure of himself and said, Nah. I think I'm still going to be this uh, control freak and a racist, misogynist pig, allegedly, <laughs> as if there's any doubt, right? Yeah, I think misogyny and racism suits me, so that's what I'm going to do. So he continued to be Pierce Morgan. Or... Rather than say control freak, let's just call it what it is. The angry right white man. The angry, yeah, right. I, I, I actually threw right in there. The angry right-wing white man. That's what he was, um, he wanted to make sure he kept that. Now, the thing is, I don't know how much of a right-winger Pierce Morgan is, but I do know that he uses them to help bolster his image. So... You know, he taps into some of the darkest ideals of society and culture to keep himself relevant. And if that means he has to steamroll over this black woman to do it, then he'll do that. Except for the particular black woman in question, or that we're referring to, he really took advantage of the fact that the Duchess of Sussex, and this is what was so painful for me, is that the Duchess of Sussex could not respond. In order to try to fit in and be accepted by this family, she was unable to respond to these attacks. And so the Duke and the Duchess tried the most subtle ways possible to try to respond to some of these attacks. And what's really painful to me is that she was silenced. She was unable to reply. And he's such a gentleman he took advantage of that and he turned the heat on and just made light and folly of everything. Uh, and one of the things he kept repeating was have their cake and eat it. Have their cake and eat it too. And then he, it got so bad that even other people in the British media kept repeating the same thing. And they could not mention the Frogmore without throwing the price of everything around. It was just horrific. So by the time Dr. Shola and Pierce Morgan clashed on TV that day, they were both at a particular place 
that they could not pull back from. And what happened, happened. I can't really give justice and <clears throat> I can't go word for word and tell you exactly what happened with Dr. Shola and Pierce Morgan that day. But you can simply go to the um, Good Morning Britain uh, channel and find it. I'll try to remember to put the link in there, but um, it was epic television. And it was more than called for. It was time. It was time that somebody called him out and took him down in an epic type of way. So that wasn't enough, though. Because Alex Beresford, um, he was next up to plate. Pierce Morgan was unhinged. He seemed to see that he was losing the battle, but he just would not stop. And so when uh, this supposedly alpha male Pierce Morgan actually had this collision with a real man, you know, someone who could take his shirt off in public without closing a beach. <laughs> Someone who's intelligent and, and, and speaks using thought rather than bluster and blubber. Um, this, this is when things really took a different turn because Alex very gently tried to calm Pierce down and Pierce was still, you know, doing his performance. And I think it's just really a performance and because he's in the position he's in, he doesn't really care who gets hurt. He would sit there on television. If the Duchess of Sussex had self-harmed, he would sit there on television and try to mourn with the rest of us as though he had nothing to do with it. And then when the, the coast is clear, he would say, well, you know, we had our differences, but I've always uh, really respected her. Oh, God. You know what a nightmare that would have been? Thank God the Duke and Duchess of Sussex got out of there. But Alex Beresford, he handled his business that day. And as a, a man of color... He stood up for a woman of color, which is what we're supposed to do. He stood up for his queen and, and made sure that Pierce Morgan knew, you know what, man, that ain't cool. You have gotten away with this for a long time. And the 15 minutes, the uh, what was it, the yesterday or the day before, or was it that very morning, whatever it was, Alex told him, he said that was like the hardest 15 minutes of television that we've ever had here. And it was all because of the bully on set, Pierce Morgan. And he didn't do this alone. His employers allowed him to carry on like this for the sake of the ratings and for racism. And that's exactly what it was. It was nothing but racism. That is what fueled this whole takedown And like the coward that he is, Pierce Morgan could not sit back and have a reasonable conversation about any of the exchanges. He decided, you know what, I'm, I'm out of here. Like a coward, he ran. And this is the guy who has the brazen audacity to criticize a 24-year-old child. She's a child to me. She's a child to him. She's an adult woman, but between the both of us, we're too old to have these confrontations with a child to try to provoke hostility in order to bolster our image in the various medias. And for him in particular, he's in a position of power and authority. But he's such a victim of society's, I guess he considers playing to the people of color, of color, that he is the victim. And that's what's wrong with this whole thing is that 
these so-called real men, these alpha uh, alpha males that like to chug beer and then beat their chests, they see themselves as the ones that are the victims. So Pierce Morgan is the victim. Donald Trump is the victim. They're all victims. The loudmouth right-wing male is the victim. Not a conservative, right-wing males. The right-wingers. The white-wingers. They are the victims. And because they play the victim, that gives them the moral authority to attack women of color. And if, you, if you're a white woman and you sympathize with a woman of color, then you are subject to attack. Hillary Clinton was one of the first public officials to say that she wasn't surprised. And she believes the Duchess. And this has been going on for way too long. So Pierce Morgan took the coward's way out. He ran. He ran like a coward. He ran up out of the studio. Now this... This lumbering, vicious bowl of jello, vicious bowl of jello that lounges about when he's not trying to take people down, decided, let me show them how athletic I am today. I'm going <laughs> to I'm going to run up out of this studio. I'll show them pompous arrogance. Pierce Morgan's usual workout is practically none at all. Yet he decides that he's the one who's best fit to tell Simone Beals how to be a champion. He's the one who's telling Naomi Osaka, this is how you are supposed to behave as a star tennis player. One of the best that's come along since the Williams sisters. This is how you, at the top of, of, of the um, pyramid of tennis players, this is how you're supposed to behave. This is how you deal with the press. Because I myself, being as athletic as I am, you know, me, Pierce Morgan, I am more than eligible to come forward and tell people how to behave as an athlete. I mean, is there anybody more athletic than Pierce Morgan? Anybody, I ask you. I don't know in what universe Pierce Morgan thought that he had a chance with the Duchess of Sussex. I don't know if I necessarily believe that that's true, but I think he's gotten a lot of mileage out of that story. He's gotten a lot of mileage out of all of the criticisms that he was throwing at her while ignoring Prince Andrew. It defies logic that he got away with all of the things that he was able to get away with for, I'm counting three years, that maybe it was more than that, I don't know. But it's incredible that he could get away with that. One of my favorite photos of Pierce Morgan is where he's standing there with his, you know, his fists all balled up like he's going to box somebody. Pierce Morgan is going to box someone. This is the champion of the right wing. This is the champion of, of the working class white male in the United Kingdom. Now, I don't want to insult all of the white men in the United Kingdom and even those who follow him here in the United States. I don't want to insult all of them by saying that they all identify with him. But for those who actually identify with this guy, who thinks that he's right on message, with everything that they feel. Um, I, <laughs> I really feel sad for you because this guy doesn't care anything about you. He doesn't care anything about what you think. He wouldn't find himself in your company unless it bolstered his image, just like Donald Trump. He, though the people that he played to, the audience that he played to, were the audience of people needed to sustain power. They got very little from him and they got very little from Pierce Morgan because Pierce Morgan's kind is disappearing. And that's because the, the this is why he has his campaign against the woke, the woke. Because the kids nowadays 
are not taking it. And poor Sharon Osbourne. God, I feel for her. Um, I wasn't the biggest fan of hers anyway because I thought she was, um, well, never mind what I thought about her. Um, I didn't really care about her one way or the other. I thought she was um, pretty interesting, but I never thought that she was, I thought she was just playing a role in order to fit into that job that she had. Um, and they all do that. But for her in particular, I think that that was a character she created for that particular position. That wasn't the real uh, Sharon Osbourne, and everybody knows it. She had to um, pretty much clean up her act from the reality show to be the Sharon Osbourne on the talk show. And I don't know what kind of conversations that Sharon Osbourne and Pierce Morgan had, but I could only imagine what was said between the two of them before he um, turned on the telly and found out that she uh, lost her job. CBS, uh, for whatever reason, decided, well, we don't need Sharon Osbourne. But see, Sharon Osbourne went into a panic because just like Pierce Morgan, if you've seen both of them uh, react Pierce Morgan to Meghan Markle, and then Sharon Osbourne reacting to Pierce Morgan's um, exit from the show. She went into a panic. She, she was so fearful, and I want you to listen to this closely. She was so fearful of being canceled. See, they say canceled and make it sound like they are the victims. They're the, see what I'm saying about the victims? When it comes to being canceled, they are the victims. They have done nothing to deserve what has just happened to them. It's one thing if somebody is a sex predator and gets canceled. It's another thing if someone is a serial whatever, drug user or what have you, and they're in a position where they're educating kids and they get canceled or something like that. You know what I'm saying? If you're in a position of authority and you are abusive to your employee, even if it's a director and an actor, and as director you are canceled. As an actor, you're canceled. Well, they say canceled and they make it sound like it's such a terrible thing. But in the old days, we used to just say you got fired. You got booted. You were made redundant. Uh, you... Um, you were you were terminated, <laughs> but now everything is canceled. They just put everything under the umbrella of canceled. Sharon Osbourne panicked that morning because she was she worked on a knife's edge anyway. What we saw was the real Sharon Osbourne. All of the profanity, all of the bizarre, wild behavior. That's what she suppressed for years to fit into that show. God only knows what she was like before she uh, was kicked off the show that day or left, the, whatever it was. And so Pierce Morgan tried to stand up for her and say, oh, it's not a matter of Sharon Osbourne looking for work. There's work looking for Sharon Osbourne. Where's she at? <laughs> Where's she at? Huh? Where is she? Where is Sharon Osbourne? You see, that format of television is dying. It's not working anymore. That's why they're so desperate. This is why the Sussexes are still winning. Because that old thinking is so behind the times. And the days where we all have to fear this bully on television. Look at what happened to President Bully. He's gone. Now he's going to try and claw and maneuver his way back. But he only got in there because of inconsistencies on election day. They used robots and stuff to put him in there, but it took the will of the people to get him out. And how did he get kicked out of office? Please listen to me carefully again. Black women. An empowered black woman is a frightening thing to a lot of people. The Democratic Party could not function without the black woman. 
Now, black women are not the largest block of voters in the Democratic Party, but they are the most um, loyal voting block that you could ever have. You see, there was never a time when Bernie Sanders was going to win against Hillary Clinton because to do that he would have to go through the black women. The black woman's loyalty was for Hillary Clinton and that never wavered. That never wavered. And so when people argued about oh you know uh, they took it from him they didn't take anything. There was never a chance because the black women black women in the Democratic Party, they knew when Obama left office or was leaving office who they were voting for, and that never changed. And so without the black woman's vote in the Democratic Party, you cannot win. That is the voting block that you have to win. Bernie Sanders' mistake was he never courted that voting block. He was depending on the young people to carry the day for him. But that wasn't enough for the Democratic Party. You had to have the African-American woman. So people are terrified of an empowered black woman. And it's been that way for a long time. And that's why they work so hard to suppress, to, to try to restrain the black woman, because putting them in the position of leadership or putting them in any kind of position of power and authority, it is it, something about that that just triggers people and they get so frightened about that. But it's been that way for a long time. So um, some of you guys get what I'm saying, others don't. But any empowered woman, any empowered woman, no matter what race they are, a woman who has power, a woman who uses her her power and her intelligence and her abilities, they always seem to frighten weak men. Not a strong man, but a weak man. And any man who argues and quarrels with a woman, or a man who would sit on television day after day and take advantage of the fact that a woman has been silenced by her circumstances and use that to destroy her, Essentially, to, to try to, to um, take her life from her. To, to remove all of her power. That's a very weak man. So while Pierce Morgan is trying to demonstrate to people what a strong man he is and what, what a smart, intelligent man, the defender of, of the realm, he's actually exposed in his weakness. A real man never argues with a woman. And least of all, a real man would never deliberately try to destroy a woman like that. But that's what he's doing. And so when I look at the Duke of Cambridge and I see how he has tried to destroy his sister-in-law, that let me know how weak he is. That is a very weak individual. The only power that he has is the fact that he has been given all of this authority, supposedly ordained by God. That's his authority. But he's very weak. That's a weak man. Any man who carries on like that is weak. Real men do not behave like that. I cannot stress that enough. So, anyway, um, here's another rant for you. <laughs> and if you made it this far, God love you. Um, but yeah, this watching all of this unfold and seeing how society plays to this um, male authority, and in particular, the white man in Western society gets away with so much that it's almost unbelievable to see them play the victims, to see them wake up every day and say, somebody's taken something from me when they have so much, they have so much. And those who are weak, the only way that they can be strong 
is to try to destroy the strongest woman that they can find. Not a man, a woman. Yeah, Donald Trump tried to bully. <laughs> he tried to bully Joe Biden. He tried to bully the kid from Scranton. It didn't work. And the only way he was able to defeat Hillary Clinton is that he found women to do it. He used women's, um, I'm not even sure what he used. I'm not sure how, how that works. But he used that, the, I would say it's the type of woman who writes for the Daily Mail. That's the type of woman. The, the um, watchdogs to hell. Those are the ones that he used. Those guard dogs to hell. Yeah, those are the ones that he used in order to take down uh, Hillary Clinton, who was not afraid of him, who was not fearful. The only way to beat her is you had to cheat her, and that's what he did. He had to, to cheat her to beat her. And she was electronically lynched on television. I never thought I would see a blonde woman on television being brutalized. But look who did it. A punk. Someone who is just the smallest, most fragile person that you could ever find. Anyway, Pierce Morgan is gone. Sharon Osbourne sacrificed herself for no good reason. She just decided that she couldn't hold her breath any longer. <laughs> <laughs> whatever she was doing but um you know what i'm here for the sussexes and nobody else um that's what this channel is for and as for pierce morgan bye punk